I'm Tamara Lackey, and on this episode of Redefined Show for Adorama TV, I speak with Becca Zirkin, an independent paper engineer who shares with us how she bends reality on famous pop-up works such as The Walking Dead, Game of Thrones, and so much more. Check it out. Hi, Becca. How are you? Oh, good. Thank you. Thanks for joining me here in our studio in Chapel Hill. Thanks Appreciate for having it. me. You are a paper engineer. Yes. And you are the first paper engineer I've ever met. There are not that many of us. <laughs> you were saying that. There's not that many of you. Yes. Like it's a smaller field in general. It's a small field. Most of us know each other or one degree separated from each other. So it is a very unique field to go into. Yes. And, um, it is a, a lot of fun. Yeah, and paper, it's, we were talking earlier, has making um, a huge comeback. You know, in photography, it's shooting more with film and printing more of your work. Um, in uh, books, I know my kids don't want to ever look at a Kindle or an iPad. They want physical books, and it's becoming more and more a thing, whereas I thought by now that'd be phasing out <laughs> with the iPad and everything else. Um, and the same thing with uh, physical products that are a lot more creative are on the rise as well. Well, I think a lot of people worried that Kindles and iPads might be the death of pop-up books, but right. in fact there is no other way to experience a pop-up book besides holding it, it in your hand, <laughs> and that is really what the magic of it is. And in fact, uh, the pop-up books are doing great because yeah. there's, it really is a unique experience. Speaking of, I'd love to, this is your latest book, right? Yes. The Walking Dead. The Walking Dead. <sighs> um, and it's brilliant. Like, it's gore. Thank you. Just look at that. Um, this is significantly more complex than I ever would have guessed based on what we were talking about in terms of making something like this work. Can you walk us a little through how something like this gets started? Sure. Um, I, yeah, I know, it's gory. and it's to I was never into gore before, but I have to say I got like totally addicted brilliant. to this show. Yeah, it was really fun to be able to make something where you could just be as violent and gross as you wanted. It's that absolutely not my style. Um, <laughs> but I had a really good time with it. Um, yeah, I mean, to get started, it's daunting because you have in your mind that you want this scene that shows all this action and all this gore and all this movement, but all you have in front of you is some flat paper and your exacto and some tape. And you're, so, and you're literally starting with paper, yes. tape, and exacto. You're not starting with a computer. No, okay. I don't start with a computer. So I just start folding and taping and cutting and snipping things off and taping things on and I end up with you know, a huge pile of scraps all over the office. Right. And that's that's a sign that I'm working hard if yeah. there's scraps all over. And the little by you little. Make, the, the better you're doing. Right, exactly. Okay. And, you know, little by little I get a movement that I like. And then I've created an opportunity to add another movement because there's some good fold that has good power behind it. So that right. means I can add another fold. And then I could have something else coming off of that. And all of a sudden I have things moving in different directions. So and something so, like this. Right. So. I was really proud of this one because it does have a lot of movement in many different directions. And not only that, yeah. it closes back up. And, right. So that's, that's the hard part. So, I mean, this is, there's some basic pieces driving the action on the outside. The pieces that you're not really looking at that are attached to the base ah. are what's driving the action. And then from there, with each fold, I get a new opportunity to add some more action and more pieces that might move in an opposite way. So you just start by playing around, messing up, yeah. getting frustrated, <laughs> and it takes a lot of patience and stick to Like You just have to keep pushing through even when something's not working, and eventually um, you end up with something just really interesting and surprising. And there was no way to imagine that you were going to get to that point except to just start trying things. Just go. Yeah. And and how does, um, so how do you get the imagery for this? You said it's not photographs because you need to bend, bend it's, what, reality? Is that how you put it? It's very challenging to use photographs in a pop-up book because yeah. there's always going to be some place where you're fudging it a little bit and bending reality a little bit because you're constrained by the size of the book and things having to fit back inside. And so it's always, it would look a little awkward if you use photographs. Sometimes there are a few books where it's been done really well. Yeah. But um, usually it's illustrated. So right. with this book, as in many books, you start with a white dummy. So first I figure out how I want the engineering to be with sketching that shows you know what I'm imagining each of these pieces represents. And then 
once that's approved by the editor, then I take that and I map it out in a huge PDF where there's color coding and arrows and this connects to this, this is the reverse of this, make sure the hair flows from here to here, but the, the arm's gonna have to be awkwardly short in order to make it fold back inside. Ah, so I so there's always like a, a lot of... And an elbow might not be a human one. They might well, not. This, I don't think this is human. Right, it's not really gonna fit proportionally. I mean, with the, the artist, um, in this book, Sally Jackson did a really great job. You know, Aww. this is, the, these would not match up with how she was taught to draw the proportions of a person, right. but she made it work. And so it's not what you notice. And yeah. you just, you, you trust that the viewer is more, that the viewer is willing to have their reality bent a little bit to go along with you. Yeah. And that's what makes it work. I don't think I've ever noticed that before. Well, good. Like how it all, yeah, that's a good thing. <laughs> We're doing a good job. Um, and then, yeah. and with, uh, with something like this, oh my goodness, I didn't even know that did that. Look at that. That's so cool. So with yeah. something like this, how, how do you get started on a book like this? Like you, you said there's not a lot of people doing this, first and foremost. Right. Um, and Walking Dead is a huge show. Huge show, right. No, I was extremely grateful to be able to work on this book. Um, my, I worked with Matthew Reinhardt, who's a very prolific pop-up book uh, creator in New York City, and right. I worked in his studio for a while, and it was through working with him that um, I got referred to this publisher to work on this book. Yeah. So, it so it's like you're really stealing your talent and you get known for it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you also worked on a couple other big uh, books with him too, right? Well, he's done amazing books yeah. and he's incredible. So one, my favorite one to work on was the Transformers pop-up book. Yeah. That just was such a great challenge right. to make the parts work together because yes. it was each piece would, you, you would pull a tab and it would open up and transform into something completely different. So it was you just think first about the pop-up as it opened and then how it was going to look yeah. when it pulled. And so he just came up with this incredible design and it was really fun to work on it. And the Star Wars, he did the Star Wars pop-up book. So when I started working with him, he was finishing up the second one. So okay. I got to work on that and yeah, yeah. did some Disney books and just did a lot of really exciting projects with him. So after you get it to um, paper, and this is not just for books, it's for cards too, right? Yes. These are some of the cards you've done? Yes, yeah, so I do a lot of freelance work for a company called Up With Paper, and uh -huh. they do these style of cards that you see a lot in Barnes & Noble and a lot of big yeah. sellers. You see these stands where they're propped open like this. So I, um, they, with them, actually, it's the opposite order that uh, they send me illustrations that their illustrator has done and then I get to turn that into Oh, you the make that up. work. And then I make that Versus work. Versus right. blank right. slate. Yes, it's a very a different kind of right. thinking because you have to be creative about figuring out how to make this artwork fit within the constraints of the the trim. Right. And like this is a square and this is a tall and you've got a Right, exactly. Yeah. And and one of the other things that's really different is when you open a book, you're opening it almost 180 degrees, mm -hmm. not quite. Right. And so when we engineer that, you know, you have to consider how far is the reader really going to open the book because that determines how much movement you're going to get from that. Because ah, that the know, impact how, of it. The impact of it, right, yeah. exactly. So all of the angles in the book are built around how you know the reader's gonna open it. Right. But these are designed to go to 90 degrees, uh -huh. so it's a very different kind of engineering because I know that oh. I'm not gonna get that yeah. full open. And so of course, and I right. have to think about it differently and use different angles to make it work. I never So it's a different challenge. That. Yeah, that's all I'm yeah. thinking. But yeah. it's obviously got this whole little 3D effect yeah, yes. I'm going on not just the actual pop up, but within all the characters, you've got little pieces popping out. And yeah, yeah, so they're cool. very fun to work on. And I, this one actually, I really liked working on because uh, this one's very 90 degree oriented. Now, when I look at a pop up, I actually always look at it from the side because oh. that's really what I'm interested in is what's going on in the back. This one was a little more off angles, and I got to experiment with some different styles, like these pieces slide forward uh -huh. and pull up from the bottom. Yeah. Because in order to have something, you couldn't have something this close to the front of the card and have it be that tall if it was going to fold forward and down because it would stick right. out. So you're, I have to work around the so constraints of it. Is, yeah, that's yeah. what I, I really like, the problem-solving mechanics of yeah. it. Yeah. How do you get into being a paper engineer? 
Um, I can't tell you how most people get into it, but I can tell you how you. I got into it, which was a very unusual way, I think. I used to be an elementary school teacher. I did that for a long time uh -huh. and um, really liked it. And then I was ready for a change. And I decided I was just going to pick something totally different that just sounded really exciting and go for it. And I had no art training. So I said, all right, I'll give it a year. I mean, whatever I pick, I'll give a year and see if, if I'm on an upward trajectory and if it's working. So I picked pop-ups, just sort of out of the, the blue. I, yeah. I said, that looks really exciting. It just looks like such great problem solving. I know that I could learn how to do that. Someone has the job to make that book. So maybe I could have it that could job. job. Maybe it could be my job. I love that. So I gave it a year. I really weaseled my way into a class at Pratt Institute that I kind of had no business being in, but I was really lucky and a very nice woman in the continuing ed office signed my paperwork that allowed me to do that. And then I had this great teacher, Kyle Ullman, who at the time was working in an amazing studio with Robert Sabuda and Matthew Reinhardt in New York. Ah. And so, uh, so he was teaching this class. He taught me a lot. And that's, you know, I would stay up till three in the morning trying to figure out how to finish a pop-up. You know, I was just so invested in, yeah. in solving this. Right. And then I'd still, you know, I'd still be getting up at 6.30 to get my kids to school. It was for the, that one semester was very intense. Exhausting. But it was exhausting, <laughs> but I was so into it. I just right. really wanted to learn. And so at the end of that, I ended up working with Sam Ida, who um, is another great paper engineer who came out of that same studio and now has done a number of his own books. Um, and the way I worked with him was I showed up at a panel discussion at a bookstore and said, I've made this in Kyle's class, and I'd really like to work for you. And so he hired me, and that went really well. And so I said, OK, well, it's been a year, and I'm on an upward trajectory. So yeah, it's keep working. going. It's working. Yeah. Keep going. And then a couple of years later, I was working for Matthew, and that was great. It was great. Keep going. And so now I'm you know, doing my own freelance work and making books, and I'm really Pleased. Yeah. yeah. And working on some really high profile stuff. Yeah. So, so it's next? really exciting. What do you think's next for you? Well, I'm really happy with what I'm doing, but I, um, it was great to learn that you can totally remake yourself. That was a very big <laughs> yes. lesson. That I could yes. go from an elementary school teacher to a paper engineer just by deciding you want to do it and having a goal and working really hard for it. And that was, you know, that's something people say, but actually experiencing yeah. that made me feel like, like no, oh, works. I can actually do that. So. I don't know what the next thing's going to be, but astronaut. When astronaut <sighs> might be pushing it, but <laughs> you never know. Never but know. when you know when the time comes that I need a new thing, I'll know that I can do it. Fantastic. Yeah. So wonderful. Well, good. Well, yeah. thank you for taking the time. Where can people find out more about you? I have a website, yep. BeccaZirkin.com. Perfect. All right. We'll have the graphic right here. Okay. Sounds right. good. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thanks so much for joining us, Becca. Check us out here next time on Adorama TV. And do not forget to subscribe to Adorama TV so you can bend your own reality in your own life.